Good morning everybody. It's a beautiful day in the Missouri Ozarks. We are out in the garden this morning by our tomatoes. We've had some wind and so these guys are on the brink of tipping over. We actually had also a really strong storm with a lot of rain that knocked down uh, our jet stars and our jet setters. So we have already tied them up. We're hoping for the best with them. They actually ended up getting a little bit crooked and hopefully they'll straighten themselves out over time. But today we're going to be preventatively tying up the rest of these two rows that we have in the garden of tomatoes. This row is of our paste tomatoes and then the other row uh, behind Kevin is our experimental row as well as our cherry tomatoes. So we thought we would uh, just bring you guys out to the garden today while we're tying these up. We've got lots of things on the agenda for today. We're going to see how much we can get done. There's always more to do than we can possibly accomplish in a day. So we thought we'd bring you along and just kind of show you what we're up to today. So when we tie our tomatoes, first of all, we always grow our tomatoes along a fence or a trellis like this. We just make these out of uh, regular field fencing that you would uh, have out in your pasture. Uh, we grow our tomatoes right underneath them so they grow up along the fence. And then we just use a regular cotton string that you can buy at the store and that's what we use to then tie the tomatoes to the fence. Uh, nothing really very fancy. We just tie the string to the fence and then make a big loop around the tomatoes. Now we'll normally do, you know, seven or eight tomato plants at a time uh, with one continuous piece of string. We don't just tie each tomato plant individually. We'll go, you know, along, uh, you know, several plants. To add some extra stability, we'll weave it uh, in between the plants so that it goes on both sides of the fence and that will help hold them up even when it gets really windy. So all three of the rows are tied up and while we were down there, we realized that we have some pruning to do. The majority of the pruning that we do on our tomato plants is to keep leaves up off of the ground uh, so that they're not touching down on the ground where they can pick up diseases and those kinds of things that will spread up to the rest of the tomato plants. Anything that we think might even grow near the ground, we're gonna cut those leaves off. Over the years, we have received lots of questions about whether or not we remove the suckers on our tomato plants. And it may surprise you that in general, we don't remove the suckers on our tomato plants. We understand the reasons why you would like to. It will focus nutrients to the existing tomatoes to make the tomatoes bigger, and it will provide more airflow within the tomato plant to ward off diseases and blights and those kinds of things. There's one main reason why we don't pick the suckers off of our tomato plants and that is production. Volume of tomatoes that will be produced with a plant that has not had the suckers removed versus those that have. While a tomato plant will produce bigger tomatoes, if you do remove the suckers, if you don't, you'll get more tomatoes. And we're not quite convinced that the overall pounds of tomatoes will be more if we take the suckers off than if we just leave them on and get lots more tomatoes. 
Now throughout the summer, if we feel that some of these tomato plants are getting too big, too bushy, and are um, holding in too much of the moisture and the humidity, we will go through and selectively remove some of the sucker branches. But in general, we don't do that unless things are getting really out of control. So I did want to let you know why we don't and that it's not required to remove the sucker plants. There are lots of videos out there showing you how, and if that's what you'd like to do, that's great. It's everybody's personal choice. But on our homestead, right now, we are not removing the sucker branches on our tomato plants. Just in case any of you don't know what a sucker branch is, let me go ahead and show you. This right here is a sucker branch. So you see the main stem of the tomato plant here and just a regular leaf here. So in between the leaf and the main stem, a branch coming out is called a sucker branch. The pruning that we do on our homestead really just eliminates any of the branches or leaves that are touching the ground or are about to touch the ground. So this branch here We're at no risk of this plant not being able to grow or you know, have enough leaves for the photosynthesis process. We just wanna make sure that nothing is in fear of touching the ground. Leaves that are touching the ground are exposed to diseases on the ground or any of the blights that travel on the ground anything that's in the dirt that can splash up with the heavy rain. We don't want that on the plant to keep it safe and free of diseases. So the next thing on our to-do list today is to pull up all of the beets that we have growing in our spring garden. Uh, they're, they look like they're just about perfect. They're nice size beets right now. So we're going to go down this row. We're actually going to pull up the entire row at this point regardless of size. I see very few that still look on the small side. So I don't think it's worth leaving any at this point. Uh, we're getting now into the warm season. If we leave them much longer, uh, they'll either start to get woody or bugs will start to eat into them. So it's just time to get them out of the ground. We're also going to save as many of the greens as we can uh, so that we can uh, boil those up. We'll either freeze some of those for over the winter to put in soups and things like that, or we'll eat a lot of them fresh uh, after we get them in the house. Look at that, that is a beautiful looking beet. These are definitely the best looking beets we have ever, ever grown. They're gorgeous. These are the Detroit dark red beets from Baker Creek Seed Company. Man, they are gorgeous. They all have a great shape and uh, we're excited to get processing these. We will eat some of these before doing anything with them. You know, just roast them in the oven with some butter and uh, some salt, but I also will be pressure canning some of these and Kevin likes pickled beets, so I will be pickling some as well. Look at that one.
Well, look at these gorgeous beets. We got two nice big baskets of beets and two big baskets of the greens. Now these beets, are, we're guessing there's probably about 40 pounds of beets here. Uh, we'll take them in the house and we'll weigh them to find out for sure, but it's got to be right around 40, maybe just a little bit over. These are absolutely gorgeous. You know, one of the first memories that I have of being on a farm is my great grandpa's farm. And about the only memory that I have of that is helping him pick beets one year. And so whenever I see beets like this, it just kind of brings back those memories and how we're trying to kind of rebuild that life that they led uh, way back then when they lived on a farm. So uh, this is really cool. We Luckily here in Missouri, we can plant these again in the fall. Uh, so we'll be able to double or even maybe more uh, this amount of beets this year. So now we need to get these into the house out of the sun so they can uh, cool off and we need to get started preserving them. With beets, it's important that you don't wash them before you put them in the refrigerator. Really any root vegetable, uh, you want to leave the dirt on until you're ready to use them or until you're ready to preserve them in some way. Uh, the dirt will actually help them stay better longer. So we'll put these in the refrigerator just the way they are. We'll put them in bags and just double bag them and they'll stay for a long time in the fridge if we don't get to them right away. Well guys, we wanna take you on a short adventure today. The wind is like super crazy. So hopefully we can get through it and we can show you guys something that's hopefully pretty exciting. Uh, but I'm not sure how much longer we can work with this sun or this uh, wind outside, but uh, let's go on our adventure <laughs> and uh, we want to show you guys something, hopefully. Last year we tried several varieties of winter squash and we had so many squash bugs and so many bugs attack those things that they it was just a complete nightmare. So this year we swore that we would not plant any squash in any of our gardens because we were just tired of all the squash bugs. But we decided to try something different that we'd never done before. We actually planted several varieties of pumpkin and winter squash back by the pond and over next to the woods over here. So it's been a couple of weeks since I planted the seeds. Let's go see if any of them have sprouted. Well, I'm back here by our pond, which is back over here. And a couple of years ago, Kevin got brave and took the tractor and he dug out a lot of the sediment in the bottom of the pond and he made a big pile of it over here and we haven't really done anything with this uh, dirt over here so i decided maybe to try uh, planting some pumpkins in here over here and i planted in two separate areas this is where we planted some of the cherokee tan pumpkins from deep south homestead that we got um, and i planted two seeds at least two seeds over here and it looks like they have sprouted and are coming up right over here so here they are here are two of the seeds that I planted over here so that's super exciting hopefully nothing eats them off and then we'll get some pumpkins over there let's check out another area in the same pile that I planted just a couple more seeds well I've been looking over here and I thought for sure that I was gonna have to tell you well I can't find them anymore because there are so many weeds, but I just spotted them. There are two more of them that came up right over here in this pile. So I'm just going to push these weeds away a little bit and see if we get more of those Cherokee tan pumpkins growing all over here. This would be exciting if we had pumpkins that just took over. So let's go and explore the top of the berm of the pond because I planted a couple seeds up there too. Different pumpkin seeds. Here is one of the pumpkin seeds that I planted and it did sprout. That's exciting because this is one of two varieties that I planted that are like gigantic pumpkins. We had a subscriber over Christmas send us some like award-winning pumpkin seeds from pumpkins that were like several hundred pounds. 
so this is one of those seeds i can't remember which one i planted where but one was like over 800 pounds and another one was over like 500 pounds so that is exciting while i was over here you know how i like to forage for things and notice things in the forest and when i'm out walking around but right over here right next to me is a mushroom and i think it's called um, old man in the woods or something like that anyway it uh it's not poisonous but i don't think it's very tasty i wouldn't eat it anyway but it's just interesting i love to find things like this so let's go look at some of the other places that i planted seed and see if they came up well i couldn't find that second seed that i planted over on the edge of the pond area but i know that on this side of the pond there are two other places that i planted those big pumpkin seeds so I want to show you where I planted those. So on the other side, I planted the pumpkins up high on the berm. Um, but on this side, I planted them lower so that if we get a lot of rain and the um, pond, you know, kind of fills up more, hopefully that will water those pumpkin plants a little bit more. So let's go look down here and uh, see where I planted those others. Now these are still big pumpkins, but not quite as big as the ones I planted over there. Here's one of them right here it came up so i'm happy about that and then the other one i planted over here a little bit if i can find it again oh yep here it is kind of down in the weeds a little bit So it'll be fun to see if those continue to grow and if they produce any pumpkins. I'm not sure how the soil is or how the sun is here. We'll just have to see. It's just our experiment. But when I was walking by up this path to the pond, I found something on the ground I wanted to show you guys. Come on, let me show you. So as I was walking up to this area, I looked down and I found a tiny little bird's nest it looks to me like it was just the beginning of a bird's nest like they were just starting to make it and then it like fell out of a tree or something but it looks like it's made out of some kind of fur it's kind of weird i can't really identify what kind of fur it is it's long i'm not really sure but it's kind of neat tiny little nest Anyway, one more spot I want to show you that I planted some random squash over here just on the edge of the woods. Let's go. So we're at the edge of the woods. The pasture area is over here and I planted over here some Pennsylvania Dutch crookneck squash pumpkin. And some people call it like a winter squash. Other people call it a pumpkin. But it looks like we have we have at least two of the plants coming up right here. I think I might have only planted them right here. So, oh, three. Three plants right here. So I'll just let them all go and sprawl out and spread wherever they want to. And hopefully we get some squash without having the squash bugs invade where they were over in our summer garden last year. Hopefully they don't find their, their way over here. But anyway... We're gonna try it and it's working so far and that's pretty exciting. So you guys, that's where our adventure is going to end for the day. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. We hope you enjoyed uh, watching our harvest and learn a little bit about how we tie up tomatoes. If you're enjoying our channel and you're not a subscriber yet, right now is a perfect time to hit the subscribe button below. Don't forget to please share this with your friends and family. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.